Right, everyone. All right. Hey, hey, hey. <laughs> Settle down. Come on. <laughs> Listen, I don't want to be here either, okay? I'm obligated to teach this class. Doesn't mean that I want to out of the goodness of my heart. <laughs> Please. Last thing I want to be doing. Whatever. All right, the Foundation has told me that I have to come here and basically do what you could call... A freshman seminar. A 101, if you will. Right? So, okay. With that out of the way, my name is Dr. J. Thomas Rembrandt. And I will be conducting this class. <laughs> Introducing you to this among, if you choose to stick around, and many other SCPs. So, um... Let's get started, shall we? SCP-1 The following files have been classified top secret by order of the administrator. General Notice 1 Alpha In order to prevent knowledge of SCP-1 from being leaked, several slash no false SCP-1 files have been created alongside the true file slash files. All files concerning the nature of SCP-1, including the decoy slash decoys, are protected by a mimetic kill agent designed to immediately cause cardiac arrest in any non-authorized personnel attempting to access the file. Revealing the true nature or natures of SCP-1 to the general public is cause for execution, except as required under- Warning. Right? Any non-authorized personnel accessing this file will be immediately terminated through Berryman Langford Mimetic Kill Agent. Continuing on without proper mimetic inoculation will result in immediate cardiac arrest, followed by death. You have been warned. Alright. So here we have the 30... SCP-1 proposals, as it were. I will read you one of them, the first one. Codename, Jonathan Ball. SCP-1, object class, Keter. Special containment procedures. To date, no adequate containment procedure has been developed to deal with the possible threat posed by SCP-1. This is due, in part, to the controversial nature of the item, and debates concerning the necessity of its containment. This controversy is reflected in the item's changing object class, and the procedures utilized in its containment. The current administration, despite charges of paranoia, has classed the object Keter, while requesting permission for a higher object class to be created and applied uniquely to this item. Considering it to be the most dangerous of all known or possible items. The reason for this classification and changing attitudes toward SCP-1 are dealt with in the description and notes. At present, SCP-1 is located in a code-locked briefcase made of high tensile reinforced polymer. The room and briefcase are monitored at all times by security cameras. The briefcase cannot be opened without a unanimous special clearance from all current O5 officers. The briefcase itself is stored in a small, fully lit, single room, off-site building, erected in- Class D personnel are posted to guard the building but may not enter without the aforementioned agreement from the O5 officers, under threat of immediate termination. The off-site building exists for the sole purpose of housing SCP-1 and is wired for detonation in an emergency situation. It is the opinion of the current administration that SCP-1 represents the greatest threat to national and global security known to exist. Nevertheless, 
due to special circumstances regarding its mode of function, further research on the item is disallowed. Despite its promotion in the past, when SCP-1 was contained in minimum security conditions. Description SCP-1 is a simple sheaf of papers, stapled together in the top left corner. At the top sheet is a covering sheet reading simply, Confidential Report on Special Items. Classified. The number of subsequent papers stapled to this covering sheet is intermediate, and have ranged from 3 to 30. The report is unsigned, and its origin is unknown. The first appearance of this report was on when it appeared on the desk of deceased. The report at that time described the living room, SCP-2. Shortly after reading the port with incredulity, was contacted by phone regarding said item. The next time pursued SCP-1, it described not the living room, but biological motherboard, SCP-3. Immediately closed SCP-1, thinking it was a different report, and searched for the original report on SCP-2. Not finding it, he again opened SCP-1, and this time it described not SCP-3, but the twelve rusty keys and the door. SCP-4 closed the report once more and opened it immediately to read of Skeleton Key, SCP-5. It is not known what the next actions of <laughs> might have been. At varying times following this incident, the aforementioned items were discovered. Insufficient research exists concerning the correlation between SCP-1 and all other known items. However, it has been established that every event regarding the discovery of a new SCP item has followed a report on that same item appearing beneath the cover sheet of SCP-1. The current administration regards this coincidence as proof of casual connection. Additional notes. Whether SCP-1 is to be regarded as an advance warning system, or whether SCP-1 itself is to be regarded as the creator of the items, requiring special containment, remains to be seen. However, the distinction is unimportant in the eyes of the current administration. The fact remains, no new SCP items appear unless SCP-1 is opened and read. It is for this reason that the current administration refuses to repeat the mistakes of the past, mistakes that have resulted in over 1,000 SCP items coming to the knowledge of the SCP unit. Arguments concerning the non-lethality of SCP-1 itself, its theoretically beneficial use as an SCP warning system, or its use as a progenitor of advanced biological and non-biological weapons have not swayed the current administration, nor have arguments criticizing the extreme containment procedures employed in respect to an item that displays no nefarious qualities, and is not animate as such. Critics are reminded that these procedures are intended not to contain the item itself, but to isolate it from human interaction, which is to be regarded as the true threat. Although the current administration refuses to remove the object from isolation barring special authorization as noted above, past administrations have counseled daily with the item, and future administrations will no doubt counsel similar behavior. Nevertheless, it is the opinion of the current administration that, barring the destruction of SCP-1, it is to be contained until such a time when responsibility for its containment falls upon future administrations. All right, so that is SCP-1 for all of you. Thank you all for listening. If you still are, no doubt you've probably fallen asleep. But with that, you're dismissed.